hello, hello, and welcome to the Rag Company Podcast. This is Dane Hannon talking to you. To my right, I've got Levi Gates. Oh, yeah. And to my left, Anthony Fisher. Oh, no. And we are the Rag Company Podcast <laughs> main show. So you got that going for you, which is oh, yeah. nice. Episode Any 79. Rate, 79. All right, so. Yeah, that's a good one. Fellas. Anything interesting happened this weekend? I know there was a game or some sort. Well, some uh, Dane, did you take the weekend off? I actually did. You I did? I did not Hooray! set foot in the building this weekend. That's like a new record for me. I went a whole weekend without that's coming in that's here. A, that's truly so. impressive because even on your weekends off, you still show up. It's yeah. like you're, it's almost like you live here. I just kind of gravitate yeah. towards it. So I want to know, really I don't want to, did you take Liz out to the ice skating rink? Like what, what did you What did you guys doing? do? Did you plant a tree? Did we you... actually ended up like, Binging movies on the couch at home. Oh, that's just, nice. Just a nice little thing. We watched that Polar movie on Netflix. Yeah. How which, is it? By the way, I, I left an extended review oh. on my Facebook page because it- You liked it so much. Not exactly. <laughs> oh. Ooh, it seemed I, like I it looked a, good. I had a hot Harley take. and I were talking about it. Yeah. No, it's um, it's interesting. I Tell me if you agree with me on this. It feels like a movie that should have come out somewhere between 2003 and 2007, if you've seen it. I have not seen it. Okay. It feels like a movie but from But I know that what you're talking period. about because I want to watch it. It looks like it was made through the filter of somebody who wishes they were Guy Ritchie and or the people who made like Smoke and Aces or like Neville Dean and Taylor oh, okay. who yeah, made yeah, Crank yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. It's got some weird... like. When you read the synopsis, you think, oh, this is going to yeah, be like John the, Wick. I watched the trailer, and I was like, oh, this looks, yeah. Like yeah, you think John it's going to be like John Wick. Good... Well, <laughs> it's actually not really very much at all. And by the way, there's a moment pretty early on in the movie where they're clearly trolling John Wick fans really hard. Hmm. Like, I won't say more about it other than that, but it was definitely kind of like a hmm. this is not John Wick kind of moment. You're like, oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well. Any rate, it's it's got some funny like forced humor kind of stuff where it's like, oh, that was kind of funny. But then it it has like like I'm all about dark humor, right? Yeah. Like I love just you know, oh, you can't say that. Oh, that's wrong. Like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This movie looked like it was trying to do that, but it, it tried a little too hard in places, and it was just it, it was a little tough. You know, like yeah. uh, you ever watch like Crank or Gamer or something like that, where you know. Those guys who direct those movies, Neville Dean and Taylor, they have a very specific style. And they can do really messed up stuff, but it's in the context of this crazy it's very world. Very humorous still. Yeah. This movie had a problem with tone. So it had this thing where it wanted to do those wacky, crazy things, but then it would also try and be like taken, Super gritty. taken serious, you know, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. And it, it it had some some tonal awkwardness okay. going on. So right. it was interesting. Oh, but I would okay. I would recommend anybody go watch it and make up their own minds. But it's uh it definitely Dane just looks at it. things as like a filmmaker would. Yeah, that's my problem is I went to film school, so I have a lot of opinions. But no, it, it was definitely something like for most people, they probably find it entertaining and they wouldn't think of it any deeper than that. Yeah. Some people are going to find it like, oh, wow, that's deeply offensive to my sensibilities. OK, that too. As a filmmaker, it was a little offensive to my sensibilities, but that's its own thing. <laughs> By the way, the bad guy, did he only have access to Elton John's wardrobe? I think that was it. Because, oh. yeah, that was fun. We will we'll all rate. have to watch that movie. <laughs> there's a, there's we do a have lot. a five-hour flight coming I, up. There's a lot going on in that. <laughs> Hopefully we could uh, so, download that. The counter Netflix. isn't on in this top left yeah. corner. So, at any rate, I will pass on that. I just know some people listening will probably have read my post on yeah. Facebook and saw that. Any rate, but you did have a post about your tree. Yes, I made a post about my tree. Very gangster. I put the deal with it glasses on it, yeah. and uh, some people seemed to notice. Yeah, so that was fun. Stone cold. It was, on that it was on my Insta, which, by the way, if you've never figured it out and you're watching on the Rag Company podcast YouTube channel, we put our Insta handles down below so that you can go, you know, follow yeah. us and stuff. So Gr eight more fun. Dane. That's right. Films. Stands for Great Dane. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> Not as in the dog. I made it back in the cool days when people thought that was a cool thing to do. Now it's kind of embarrassing, but I have to embrace you can, it. You using, can change it still. Using numbers as- You can change it. I did. For like your Mine handle? was Master of Shine for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Then I changed it when I started the job to mm -hmm. the to uh, Rag Company Lee. So did you I knew you could change your name. Master I, of Shine. I did. That mm -hmm. sucks. I yeah. knew yeah. you Should could change your name, account. like your display name, but I didn't know you could change your handle. You can change your handle. I thought you were like tied to your handle, nope. like you're locked in. You can change your handle, yeah. Yeah, it just sucks when somebody else takes it. Like, there is a yeah. the Master of Shine, and it's a dude that's part of the mafia that 
was there at uh, Air Force One this last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Chris Woolman helps him a lot. Yeah. And is, thankfully, he has no social media presence. He has like eight posts for over the last like year and a half. For those who have it, that's so, a good life. So <laughs> thankfully, I'm like very excited that he's not that active on it. Yeah. But he named his business like it's all, it's all my stuff. Like, well, maybe we should let him know. Maybe he knows now. He probably is a this. listener. So, hey, dude, I forgot your name, but. Uh, don't be using my stuff. Quit stealing my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why uh, on my post I have founded mm. Masters of Shine, Master of Shine, and uh, mm-hmm. you, you, Boise's you Finest. Cross the gamut there. Yeah. That way it says, just so people know, like at least those are my hashtags. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So you're, you're, yeah. Fl- you're flexed. You're yeah. flexing on those people. So, saying, hey. hashtags, bro. So that was like my Friday, Saturday. Sunday was the game. I went to a party. And I'll wait for you guys to weigh in on that. So I didn't watch wanna... the game. You? you? Yeah, we don't. Not, we don't like sports. So. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Well, I then... I don't really. I know. Well, Dane's a huge anymore. football fanatic. I don't know if you guys knew this. <laughs> He's a fantasy <laughs> no, footballer. Not. He yeah. He he spends like hours and hours just huge figuring out fan his, as well. Yeah, loves wow. teams. Yeah, like he knows all the right things. He knows what a sticky wicket is. Like he's. <clears> yeah. It's really good no, at that kind of stuff. My problem is I have like a tangential knowledge of many different things, but it's like a mile wide and an inch deep. That's kind of the, oh. the, the, you know, I, I have like trivia knowledge. That's Jack my thing. of all so, trades, master of none. Yeah. Well, master of video editing. Oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. Uh, maybe that's your <laughs> okay, new Instagram no, handle. I won't do my own horn on that. So. I like what I do, but I'm by no means the best <laughs> or anything because yeah. I see some stuff that blows my mind every time I'm surfing YouTube. So, any rate. Definitely, I know who some of the players are. I couldn't decide. Maybe you'll you'll join me in thinking that uh, quarterback Goff from uh, the L.A. Rams looks like a weird hybrid of Ryan Gosling and Michael Sarah. He he definitely has that face. Oh, okay. It's a, it's I'll a take your word for yeah. it. No, when you look at it, look it up later. You'll agree. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And just, uh, yeah, that game yeah. was incredibly boring. I'll just put that well, out there. Well, you right know now. why? It was because nobody wanted to eat cold hamburgers with the president. Oh. Well, <laughs> yeah. that's why a oh. winning team gets to have dinner at the White House. <laughs> and last winning team that got to have dinner at the White House got to eat cold hamburgers. Yeah. Mm. Hamburgers. Yeah. God. <laughs> oh, God. Hamburgers. Well, I'm going to leave this one right where it is. Just, boy, just dropping that's it just, there. That's... So it just looked like neither team wanted to win. Like <laughs> nobody wanted cold hamburgers. So. Neither neither one scored until the Patriots were like, we're really annoyed that we haven't scored yet. So they just put some points on the board with a field goal and that was yeah. it. And uh, but that, that guy took, was the MVP. That took like half the game for them to even do that. Yeah. And then finally at the end, they're like, okay, now that we're running they down the They accidentally threw it into the end zone and someone caught it. Like, oh man, we there were going to. It's was like that South real... Park episode where all the kids had to, they were playing Little League and they were all trying to suck. Because none of them, all of them wanted their summer like vacation. Oh, they didn't yeah. want to go to the World Series. <laughs> like, I just want to stop right now. Yeah. And so they were literally like trying not to swing. And then the kids were getting good at like throwing the ball at the bat and making them make a hit and stuff. Oh, man. <laughs> like, yeah. To get yeah. them to lose. Like, and they could catch, like, they'd go, like, oh, man, I didn't even catch that. You better run. Like, oh, yeah. No, yeah, it, anybody, it anybody like. watch the game, though, y- you have to agree. Not a whole lot went on. And, you know, every. I, I'm in the camp of like I get annoyed at Brady and Belichick and those guys, but you know, I, well, like I respect Dane's a massive football fan. I respect fan. the winning, you know. If you guys could, and everything, please but, send Dane uh, lots of football related material. He <laughs> loves a, reading all that fan. stuff. Wow, send, yeah, send um, your lineup just, just for next yeah. season. If you wow. could direct all fantasy football questions to Dane well, at the Rag Company. So I did see the halftime show. So I'm sorry. Uh, that got kind of <laughs> weird once uh, Adam Levine right, mm-hmm. took his shirt off. Oh, no. Ooh. We were all making bets I'm when it sorry. started. We're like, okay, five minutes in, is his shirt coming off? And uh, all the girls who were at the party were like, it's happening. And the guys were like, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. And then sure enough, like. All the girls screamed at their party? Oh, no. Like, half of them were like, oh, my God, this guy. Like, they have them, like, hate Adam, and then the other half were kind of like, yes, show me more. Football party you're at, Dane. (laughs) Well, (laughs) it just, to me, it looks like all those tattoos. Like, he doesn't look like a guy that... Like those tattoos look too fresh. Like, 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 you know what I'm I saying? I got like, these for the show. Like, I got these for the show, and he had like a whatever it was, like a wolf and eagle, and then in the middle of all that, he had California. I wish he'd gotten like um, three wolf moon. Yeah, like, just <laughs> well, I'm yeah, I'm sitting there, and I'm kind of like, I'm like, what is there some type of code, or is there some type no. of thing we should be looking for on his body? Like, what I feel bad for is it, even though it's 
Maroon 5, you know, I'm not going to rag on them if you like their band, but don't you feel bad for the rest of the band? It's like the Adam Levine show. Well, and then there's a dude in the know, pink hoodie in the back playing the keys, and he's just so kind of like, know, yeah, I'm here too. So you know I'm a lot older <laughs> than you guys, right? Yeah. So uh, when you guys were in the fifth grade, mm-hmm. I was working a Maroon 5 concert oh. as a roadie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they were a hippie jam band. See, that's what happened. In the vein of fish. Oh, that's mm. so funny. That's what they were. Because <laughs> that's a like, whole different world. Stinky from where dreadlocks, they ended up. like yeah. three hour long set, like with like, you know, five songs for three hours. Like it was, they were garbage. Like well, back then, like I remember, was, I was like, "You know, it's this funny, is though. a horrible band." And then they're like, "Look at Rune Five. Like instantly, they changed and they were like poppy and like. But I was yeah, like, no, you know what happened? They're a hippie is basically, band. Basically, the like, the, <laughs> the corporate arm got to him and was like, "This isn't selling." So basically, yeah, no, they when you start out early, easy back that then. was probably how they honestly started out. Like they're like, "This is what I want to do. Well, this is what yeah, I'm about. That's uh, what they I like. Wanna, and then they got a little taste of like, "Oh, that's what fame could." And then he got to do proactive commercials. You know, and then and then a whole lot of. A, a moms are buying, you know, some of those early albums of like, yeah, yeah there there was definitely so, some. Uh, it, it was a thing. Like everybody's mom was into Maroon Five when I was in school. Like that was the thing. So yeah, well, yeah. it was weird. I just remember like <laughs> seeing him because I I I was a roadie for a little while and I worked at the you had knitting, lots of at cool the, shows. You worked yeah, I did a lot of cool sh- shows during that time, uh, and that was the year two thousand two to two thousand three. Like I did that a lot, like yeah. part time, and uh, it was fun, and I got to meet a ton of cool people. Yeah. But yeah, that was one of those shows. I was like Maroon Five, like, and I no one knew with a name, and yeah. then like the name didn't fit because then they came on stage, and like it was, I mean, it's like <laughs> you say fish, and I know exactly what you. No, getting at. I mean like it is fish. The music is, but the literally the clothing style. They mm-hmm. weren't like a skater band or a rock band. They were a hippie band. And I mean, yeah. dirty hippies from the park <laughs> in a drum circle. So basically like- Kind uh, of band. Dirty. All oh, right, like, yeah. Well, <laughs> like wearing the pants that look like they're made out of someone's like drapes. Basically, like we carpet. wish we could have played at Woodstock, but we're just way oh, yeah. too late yeah. to the park. They didn't, they didn't shower. Like they showed up like all dirty and filthy. <laughs> like that was gross. And I was like, I remember me and a bunch of my friends that were working that show were like, this doesn't make any sense. And then it wasn't, it was, you know- eight nine months from that time that's when they like became famous Mm. and they had a song and it was like that was when they got famous and all of us were like are you kidding me (laughs) and it was and they weren't and it wasn't and i was like there's no way that's got to be a different band and it and our boss was like who was a tour manager for a number of different bands and was snoop dogg's tour manager for a number of years uh he was he was like yeah no that's that's what happened guys they got the producer found them and changed their image and changed their music and said, now you guys can make it good. Like you'll make money. Well, and so it's just funny to think that all those dudes are closet hippies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was probably the most honest they were ever to themselves, like as probably. to what they wanted to be. Probably. And then they had to change their image to, you know, effectively sell out. Yeah. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> but what I was going to get at was there was one other thing about the halftime show. This was because the game was so incredibly boring for so many people they had to come up with a controversy that they were upset about. So with the halftime show, you may have noticed Adam that- Adam Levine slipped a nipple. No. Oh. I was going to say, you may have noticed some SpongeBob clips found their way into the halftime show, and you're oh. like, what's that about? Well, what? it's it's a whole thing. I didn't watch online. any of this, This so is I'm very much like, uh, a while back, the creator of SpongeBob died in- um, a horrible like a fire. Mu- no, like a couple months ago, he passed away. <laughs> oh, okay, good. And there's this one episode Scary. of SpongeBob, and uh, this is me just reciting what I've heard and read online, so if I'm wrong, sorry. Basically, there's an episode um, called Band Geeks that was a really, really popular SpongeBob episode. It came out in like 2001 or two, so it's it's old, but it was like highly acclaimed, like a really great episode. And they played the song called Sweet Victory, and it was like basically a you know, marching band style thing. So that's why you saw some clips of like you know, SpongeBob yeah. marching. At any rate, the guy died, and they wanted to pay tribute to him. But basically, what happened was, uh, at uh, what's the petition website for the government? The uh, I forget the pit- whatever the petition website is. A bunch of people, hundreds of thousands of people, signed up on this petition to play "Sweet Victory" at the halftime show during the Super Bowl, because in the SpongeBob thing, it was about playing at a underwater Super Bowl, essentially. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that was the time. Good it was parallel. Like, oh, and yeah. the guy died, so let's pay a little tribute. Yeah. For a lot of people, though, they're like, 
confused because nobody said it. NFL anything. is super corporate, and to get anything like anything remotely fun, like they call it the NFL the No Fun League. So basically, the fact that this found its way in there at all is amazing. But there were these constant jokes of like Maroon Five put out a little thing where they're like, "Hey, teasing, maybe we'll play this at the halftime show or whatever." And everybody got upset because they used the clips, they set it up like something was going to happen, yeah. and then they didn't play the song at all. I could care less, but I realize there's people out there who are like, oh my god, memes are so important. They freaked out because they teased it, and then they didn't actually do it, so people were just super mad about that. Hmm. But the fact, it just goes to show, no matter how nice a thing, like, the fact that it happened at all to those people is nice, but, I mean... <laughs> You're gonna be mad about it anyway. So that's one of those things where all oh, that is new to me. Yeah, and I learned about like, it as I was watching would, last would, night. Like what? <laughs> like, would you be happier not knowing any of that? See, like I said, I have a tangential <laughs> trivia knowledge of many different things, and this listeners, is what happened. would you be happy not knowing <laughs> yeah. all of that info? Are, they, are, yeah. you, are you bored out of your mind? Yeah. Yeah. All I'm this. sorry. I yeah. just find weird pop culture stuff like that interesting. So. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But, anyway, um, what happened detailing wise this weekend? Anything like you do any jobs this weekend? Anything like that? Because I realize the audience is going, "My God, Dane, stop talking. Let's bring some detailing into this." Yeah. So no. I had a friend actually drop off their car, so oh, I detailed ah. a uh, small Horse. white Xterra. Oh, nice. oh. okay. Yeah, and it, actually, they kept it pretty clean. Like stairs so, are small. Yeah, no, it wasn't small. Uh, it was, <laughs> I mean, but it was easy. Huge, so, but... so my weekend went great. I did a uh, did that little Xterra. Um, Friday night, though, I took the kids to Pojo's. Mm. So Carly went out with some friends, and uh, I took the kids to Pojo's. And wait, Pojo's or Pojo's? Is the po- thing. Po-jos. You said Pojo's after that. No, I think uh, you're hearing yeah. me wrong, did Dane. Are you having a stroke? No, he's he's <laughs> absolutely <laughs> saying Pojo's. Pojo's. <laughs> Bojos, that's what we P-O-J-O. said. Someone in the audience is laughing at the concept of Bojos. Anyway, Bojos. At any rate, go All on. All right, so I did eat at Bojos when I was in Colorado with Dylan and See, his no. wife, so that's Freudian probably what slip. you're thinking right. of. So I took the kids to Pojos. So those of you guys that aren't from Boise, Pojos is a nickel arcade or used to be. Now it's just an arcade. Yep. Uh, and... Uh, uh, my wife and I refer to it as Child Vegas. Well, they still have the carousel, right? They it do is. have the carousel. My it's kids kid did Vegas. ride it. Yeah, my kids did ride it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they threw a big fit, and they wanted to go on it. And I was like, we got to go stand in line with like 20 people to yeah. even buy tickets because it's Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. The carousel there is... Okay, <sighs> uh, how do we explain this? Okay, Pojo's... <laughs> how, how many, I don't know how many people have been to the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, right? You know, there's certain areas of the boardwalk that they look... Pretty used and abused. Pojo's, is, amusement Pojo's is, is an amusement center. They've got some old beat up ski ball, but they've got some new stuff. They've got a new bowling yeah. thing. Like in terms of it's, like Big Al's, where we had our Christmas party, Big Al's is much nicer. Their arcade, absolutely, but it is. much Super more modern. expensive. Yes, right. Yeah, far more expensive. So Pojo's, I did a lot of time there when I was yeah. a teenager. Well, it's with been my around buddies. since the eighties. Oh, least, but prior to that, yeah, I used yeah, to go 70s, when they were literally yeah. nickels in their old location. Mm-hmm. Went to college with the uh, girl, the daughter of the owners of Pojo's. Oh. And she was in one mm-hmm. of my classes, and she asked me if I wanted to do one of our uh, assignments at Pojo's. Oh, and you were like, <laughs> I don't know if I could study. Um, no, <laughs> I just didn't want to go down that path. <laughs> Oh, whoa. Yeah, I see. She uh, just didn't want to play those video games. I no, see. no, I, mm. I, I'm not going so, to get into anyway, it. Anyway, I don't I play those my games, kids. Anthony. So I took my kids there. I dropped 20 bucks and uh, got a bunch of tokens, got them a couple of ri- just a ride on the carousel, each of them. Yeah. Um, we uh, proceeded to win like 300 tickets or 200 tickets mm. uh, so they could cash those in for prizes afterwards. Ooh, yeah. But it's funny because it's just absolutely. So much noise. It's a like, cacophony. It is, and especially like there are some nights we've gone, like Carly and I have gone like on a Wednesday night to take the kids because it's cheap and it's easy to do. Yeah. Um, and they have a blast. The kids love it. Yeah. yeah. And, but, and my kids aren't like gamers, so they're not going to play game. Like they just, they, they have short attention span, so they just run to all the different machines. Sure. And, uh, but Friday night, everybody in Boise was there. <laughs> like I pulled into the parking lot and it was packed and I was like, Oh, yeah. it was six o'clock and we're pulling in. And I was like, well, we're here till seven and yeah. spent an hour. Kids loved it, though. They just like they ate it up. They had so much fun. And then we drove home, uh, just put them to bed. Carly got home later. We went to bed. And then uh, um, Saturday or no, that was Saturday night. I did that Friday night. We just kind of hung out. 
Saturday, my friend dropped off her car. I spent the day working on her car. Then Saturday night was the night I took the kids to Pojo's. So again, not a wise choice Saturday evening. Um, but then Sunday, just a nice, easy day where we didn't, like I said, we didn't watch the Super Bowl, so uh, we didn't have to worry about that. But we yeah. did, uh, you know, go out and drive around. We went to, we tried to go to the Army Navy store, but they were closed oh. for Super Bowl Sunday because we wanted to show our kids, like, you know, how to buy body bags for 15 bucks a piece. Things like that. Do, do you need them? Well, they have <laughs> yeah, them for sale. Oh, wait yeah. a second. They have them for sale there. They work out great. They're also <laughs> fully lined used. and uh, 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 waterproof. Mm. So, you know, you never know you when you're going to need a set. things that are in from getting out. Right, vice exactly. Versa. Especially <laughs> yeah. when you got to tote them around. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but they were close. We were like, oh, man. And mm. then, uh, so we just went and drove around because it's fun to drive around your city during Super Bowl Sunday when nobody is out. It's a ghost town. It's a full-on yeah. ghost town. And then Carly went over to Fred Meyer's later that night to do some shopping, and it was, uh, she was like, this is insane. Now, that's but, the thing about Super Bowl Sunday, though, is when you're out doing it, there's that certain point about half an hour after the game starts, that's when it gets quiet around town. Yeah. Right up before that, people are still at the people store. People are still at the store out, grabbing like, I things. I need these Fritos. You know? Yeah, we had friends yeah. that they were texting us, and yeah. they're like, we're just making a quick run to the store, but, 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 yeah. get stuff. We're like, cool, have fun with that. <laughs> like, we're not doing anything. Like, we're going to hang out at home. So it was just, great. But... In case anybody got confused earlier, no, I'm not like a huge football sports guy. <laughs> I just, I, I play one on TV but, once in a while, yeah. but that's it. <laughs> but it was great. Like, you know, we just, it was a normal, typical Sunday, went to church and then just yeah. kind of hung out and then thought you know what let's go wander around because there's n no one's out yeah you know and it was just kind of fun to do because i used to do that with my dad like he would take us all out like on super bowl sunday when we were yeah. growing up just because he's like why not like you get to experience everybody's not in town they're all watching tv so it's now kind of a chance yeah. surreal moment so well, how did the but, detail go it was good yeah. uh my buddy dropped off his well his girlfriend dropped off her xterra and uh She's kept it in really good shape. So it was white and charcoal gray interior. So not mm -hmm. too bad. Um, however, uh, one of the things that they need that I need to send them a ref reference on is uh, her dog proceeded to chew all the carpet out of the passenger oh. side front passenger footwell. Oh, mm -hmm. well, the worst. For no reason. Yeah. Dug a hole got and bored. started. Yeah, got bored basically. They probably left. She probably, I don't know. Like but, in a parking lot was just like yeah. i'm gonna park here for a bit i'll crack the oh, window I've, it'll be fine i've done that like i used to have a dog and i'd drop you know i'd stop at the store and i'd leave the window cracked on him and it wasn't like hot or anything but he found a hole in my seat and started to dig and That's ate the thing. dug there, himself there's a nest usually like an opportunity first they yeah. catch it and they're like oh there's a little split here yeah. i wonder if i just bit 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 and next yeah. thing you know it's then they dig a hole and they get happy and, yeah everywhere. so that's what that happened but the rest of the car was in great shape and the dog hair was very minimal because they mm. told me about that and i was like oh is it going to be like the Highlander I did a couple weeks ago? Yeah. It was not. They, she keeps it really good. She's like, I just want you to know I'm so sorry. And I was like, your dog is, I did, I found six dog hairs in this vehicle. She's like, That's well, I have a nothing. full seat cover and like, you know, the big canopy and the back yeah. of the is all plastic. So she's like, I try to keep it vacuum pretty good. And so it was good, but she was happy. I coated, I cut her, covered it in bead maker for her, mm -hmm. um, dressed everything, made it look all nice on the outside. I didn't polish it or anything like that. Sounds did like a, it didn't really Did a quick clay. I mean, it had some scratches on it, but they're not at a point where like they take it off road all the it's time. It's also white. So. It's white and they camp out of it. They also, my buddy has a Jeep that's sitting on 35s i think <laughs> and it's it, he rock crawls the ever living snot out. well he works for factor 55 so oh, okay he's the yeah. marketing director for them and so um he beats that they take both yeah. those rigs up camping all the time and it's just like not worth polishing and so i told no. him that like i'll polish it when you guys get ready to sell it yeah when you go trade it in on something else then then we'll do that stuff save some clear in the meantime but right now too. it's fine it's in yeah. good shape it looks fine it's white but all in all pretty simple um didn't have any issues with it so nice. that was me that was it heck yeah simple nice. what'd you do anthony so i detailed all weekend yeah. um oh gosh it was one of those it was one of those jobs to where you um, had three cars this weekend didn't you say so I, I had three cars i only finished two and a half and so i will have to come back for that other that other half eventually uh basically it was, it was one of those jobs uh friends of the family and um this is a house i've gone to it's the one out in marsing yeah it's, yeah it's a it's about a uh, I'd say a forty-something minute drive to get out there, and out in the boonies. Uh, yeah. Mars yeah. seems really pretty, though. Uh, like, yeah, really pretty, and uh, because it's right along the mountains community. and everything like that. It's uh, so basically this. The, the owner of these cars, I mean, his family is great. I mean, they are 
they keep things really clean. Oh, I'd say ninety nine percent of the time everything's really clean. Yeah. Uh, the the times I've gone out there, you know, going out to these cars, it's kind of nice because he's the kind of guy that runs it through the wash before he gives it to me. Right. Yeah. Like he'll Which... vacuum it out and be like, you know, there you go. Now now take a hack at it. Clean slate. And so. It's like people who clean their house before a maid shows up. <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly what it is. So, it, so it's always it's never a problem going out there to do it. Um, it's just finding the time because you know it does take me you know my time to get out there every day, yeah. and I have to kind of account for that. So basically, I mean, jumping straight into it, uh, you know, he's got a huge garage, but in the garage, I showed up. I didn't have no I had no idea what I was doing. By right. the way, I just he said, "Hey, I'm dying to get my vehicles detailed." Uh, whenever you have time, and he hit me up in October, yeah. and I was like, I am not gonna have any time until literally after, you know, after the, you know, till the new year. And instead of saying, okay, well, you know, thanks anyways, he'll like, he's 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 the type of person that says, he's like, I'll, I'll wait. wait, I'll wait, yeah. I'll wait three months. And I said, all right, okay, he let's, wants yeah. you to detail. Let's it, let's so. let's do this. So um, <clears throat> I packed up all the stuff, and you know, w- you know, I think with anybody when doing a mobile job, it's always hard. You have to have a checklist of everything that you're going to need for the job, and you know, find out. I had to kind of rethink to you know my last jobs there and say, what would have been nicer to have if I could you know redo it all over again and start fresh. And so uh, he has okay lighting in there, but. That was one thing where I said I need to bring all of my lighting. So um, the eye match uh, was my probably my best used tool yeah. on that whole time. But uh, show up to the house. Basically, what he's got, he's got a brand new Honda Odyssey minivan uh, that needs to be detailed, brand new, meaning like six months old. Uh, and then he had his uh, Jeep Wrangler that he needed, his lifted Jeep, and then he had his huge uh, Duramax. Uh, three big it, cars. Is yeah, three mm-hmm. big. Basically, what it was, three big cars. Um, so I mean, right off the bat, I kind of I kind of knew how to tackle things, but it was just funny because the, the Honda Odyssey was brand new and exterior looked great. All it needed really was a quick clean, one step, throw a sealant on it, and we're good to go. Uh, it was the interior where he said, because I told him, I said, I'm going to knock out all three cars. It's going to be great. And he's like, Well, you might want to look at the interior of the van. <laughs> yeah. um, I open it up, and right off the bat, you know, and I had my headlamp on <laughs> and the whole interior just shines. And I'm looking, I'm looking around. I'm like, what is all of this? And he's got two little girls. Keep in mind, uh, glitter, freaking oh. glitter oh. everywhere. It's the and detailer's favorite. I it promise was... it wasn't just coming home from the club uh, on the low. Well, no. cause like my light <laughs> hit it. Right. And I see all of these sparkly things like oh. all over the carpet on the seats. I'm like, what is this? And that's when I'm like, oh crap, it's glitter. So um, the glitter was one thing, but the other thing was, you know, lots of you know, crumbs, candy, um, uh, half-eaten jawbreakers, um, yeah. cereal, um, and then jelly. Standard kid stuff. Like, there was jelly everywhere. I don't know. It was yeah. just dried jelly on literally everything. So yeah. um, I didn't even skip a beat, dude. I just pulled all the seats out. I was like, forget this. And it's nice because it's one of those vans where it's easy to do. Yeah. Pulled everything out. Fold um, everything up. Fold everything up. And then just started taking taking a hack at the interior and uh, used a lot of different products. And, it, and really kind of what it came down to is I needed to develop a system basically specifically for this customer, for this guy, right? And the way his garage is positioned and me being mobile, I just say, you know, here's my process. I'm going straight into a wash, right? Not even touching the wheels for right now, getting the wash done, getting that dried, moving on into the interior. Typically I do the interior first, but the way this was set up, knocked out the interior after that. And I went from back to front. So basically I started off in the in the in the trunk of the car and then worked my way yeah. up one seat row at a time. That's, that's how I like doing it. Especially in a minivan and especially <laughs> yeah. when you can take all the seats out. Because you can work, like you said, back to front, and if you can get that main whole cargo area that, clean, it, yes, that's... then you can quarter off the front seats and get those done, and, and it, that saves you so much time. Because because the way I saw it was, you know, because I was thinking like, if I knock out the front first, I'm going to spend a lot of time on the front being really nitpicky, right? Yeah. Where I really just need to get the back done, yep, vacuumed, brushed, cleaned. And move my way forward, and then I can get a little bit picky, or if time, you know, yeah, uh, time allows. allows. So, basically, knock that out. Interior turned out uh, absolutely awesome. I know it's a new car, but there was a lot in the cup holders. There was a yeah, lot yeah. in all the weird yeah. little things: chicken were... nuggets, French fries, all kinds of good well, stuff. There's so many um, bases packets. in those new vans. Well, what was funny is that so you know how you know, when you open a van door, there's that bottom little bracket that yeah. slides along. That, the bottom those are there. full. So. 
full of that, crumbs for some under, reason. Under, yeah, under there, there was toys. There yeah. was crumbs. There was all sorts of stuff where I was like, what is under? It's like a whole nother cargo hole. It is. Of yeah. just crap. And uh, My van uh, <laughs> would get that. And yeah. I'd have to take that apart, and it started to break the automatic door chain, because the oh, automatic yeah. door chain is just plastic. So mm-hmm. if a toy got, they usually put a cover over that. Yeah. But if a toy or rocks or whatever, and you go a long time without cleaning that area jam out, it. yeah, it. I mean, a little Lego figurine could totally jam that, and it'll break that chain. Ugh. Yeah. And then you have to get it replacement pieces and try and hook it to get. It's like a. It's oh, yeah. like those uh, plastic snakes that. Like well, move, even with that's his bus, like. he calls that the basement. So yeah, and, uh, <laughs> no, it's bad, dude. Those things are it's, nightmares. It's kind of funny though, because I knew I was getting older when I was disassembling <laughs> this van, and you're taking the seats out, you know, and getting all the little cargo areas and all these little underground compartments. And I'm sitting there like, this thing's freaking awesome. Like this is cool. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, Anthony, you're saying this van is cool. I loved my van. Is he I'm starting like, to understand why I love and, JDM vans? And I'm sitting there like, why do I <laughs> no, like I all this stuff? I miss my minivans. And what was cool about that on Odyssey is it had a camera in every row, so you could watch your kids from Smart. every row. So there's one, but then there was a second one. It was wow. super weird how it, it was fully loaded. Yeah. Um, but basically, um, upon finishing interior exterior, knocked out the wheels, um, got it all cleaned up, got it polished, and then got it sealed. Looked absolutely awesome. Uh, moving on to the Jeep, it was kind of a lot of the same thing, a lot of crumbs, a lot of piece, you know, toys and, and things like that. Uh, but so a lot of people, you know, so hopefully this shows a lot of people that we don't just do cool cars. Like we yeah. we have experience with doing a little bit of yeah, everything. I, I yeah. detailed myself this this uh, Friday. I forgot to tell you guys. Oh, did you? Did yeah. you? I don't know where this oh, is going. <laughs> did some manscaping? Did some manscaping. <laughs> just on a side oh. note, this oh. is funny. So oh, we went boy. to Target and I bought uh, clippers for my back because I'm a naturally hairy man. Okay. My daughter once asked me if this was my fur, like oh. my wolf fur. That's what yeah. she said. Is this like wolf fur <laughs> on my back? Yeah. <laughs> right? It's a so, dire yeah, situation. Yeah, my, wife, a... my wife yeah. screamed when she heard her say that. <laughs> yeah. Like she just, she was like five and she walked up and like petted my back when I was just in my house with my shirt off, you know? Wolf man. Yeah. Like a man does at his house. Yeah. So, and every couple of years, I just have to thin the growth yeah. on my chest, just knock it down, right? Yeah. And let it start over. I don't shave it, but I just trim it so that okay. I can like, you know. Get rid of all the dead stuff, the dead excess. It's like controlled know? forest fires. Right, really. exactly, <laughs> exactly. Oh, That's exactly what it is, Dane. <laughs> so anyway, I bought a new pair of clippers that have a handle and stuff, so you can like actually do this. I've and, like, never seen uh, that before. It's we, wicked. We used right? to sell it at bodybuilding. It's called the Resorba, and it was. That's not uh, what it's called. What I got. The, but this yeah. version was called the Resorba. I think Resorba, Resorba. Huge seller. It's amazing. Huh. It's the one I got is a Norelco. Yeah. Huh. It's a Norelco Backmaster, Shave Master, or something, Body Master. Oh, it bought it because it had Master in the name. It did. <laughs> but anyway, so we were laughing. Like, I was working on my back, and I was like, this thing's awesome. And then Carly goes, we should try to knock down the front a bit. And I was like, all right. And so we just stuck it right in there. Nothing happened. Like, it couldn't tackle the growth, right? Oh, no. So she goes, well, we got these. Pulls out my old clippers my hair clippers. And I'm like, yeah, we could use those. We get them all warmed Don't up, tell get me them going. Pulled, Cause that hurts no, like a No, mother. it didn't pull. <laughs> so my wife is like, you know, working on my chest. Right. <laughs> and kid you not the clippers, you know, when you're mowing the lawn mm-hmm. and the grass gets a little too thick yeah. and it Old almost kills growth. the lawnmower. <laughs> Yeah, it oh, gets no. really slow. It gets and bogged and it down. Goes, it gets bogged. Bur- so, so the Clippers were doing that as she was going across my no. chest. It was all. Um, <laughs> we're learning so much today. Anyway, yeah. So it was fun, but we were not, like we were crying, like we were oh, crying, no. laughing at the sound of those Clippers. Were, like we were scr- <laughs> like it was so funny. The Clippers just. But it was one of those like. Murder. But it was one of those fun couple moments like oh, where we no. were just like, like laughing uncontrollably. <laughs> about the sound it was making. So anyway, that's I digress. That's great. Um, <laughs> anyway, about this your is detailing. A, from a man who yeah. literally <laughs> used to shave his body to look good in pictures. I uh, shaved because, you know. He was a less, male model. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah. You know, Anthony's like, this is gross, you guys, talking about body hair and stuff. Less wind resistance. I more just yeah. wondering what the audience thinks. And speed in the water, ac- right? Yeah, speed and accuracy. <laughs> um, yeah, he did. Guys, just go on uh, all day, Anthony. No, I'm just Please kidding. Don't do that. So, um, <laughs> but do. Trying to think. So, uh, yeah, so going into the details, I mean, everything worked out great. Um, what was really cool, though, is that, um, I, you know, 
they love interior stuff, right? Yeah. And that's my least fa- that's my least favorite thing to do. But I but I know that I can do a killer interior job with the right tools and everything like that. Uh, what they really loved is, that, is that, I mean, they they love getting into a fresh, freshly clean well, leather it's seat. It's clean. And, yeah. yeah. It was just one of those things. Feels like, they, like a new car again. They love the leather and it's all the knobs and things like that. That's the stuff they care about. It's I mean, not if there was, anymore. If there was yeah, crumbs yeah. on the floor, they could care less as long as the knobs, as long as the, all the hand, touch like, points, every, all the touch points. And so Tangibles. that's the first thing that they, they would always feel. But um, no, going through, I, I think the, I don't know. I didn't really have any major snags. I think it was just I was using a ton of towels, and it was one of those jobs where wiping down the jelly and wiping down all these things, I, you know, I was just kind of blowing through a lot of Edgeless 365s just because they were getting so gunked up, and I didn't yeah, want to in- yeah. reintroduce that towel because yeah. after cleaning cup holders out- well, and glitter. And glitter and all of this stuff, and God knows what's going to happen with that glitter once I wash those that's towels. That's why, it's, so it's gonna... fun fact, uh, that's why at my shop, I always carried 245s. Just toss them, you, you just know? toss it. Yeah. If you had a glitter, if yeah. you had a glitter car, yeah, you just throw the towels away because they will contaminate the entire load oh, of other no, stuff, I, and, it, sure. and then you'll reintroduce it into the next one. I'm sure, and that's so why you may I, have to destroy those towels. I used a specific color; I used only gold edgeless 365s for the glitter cleanup. So, and I have those in a like a separate little baggie. So, I was gonna try to wash them, but I mean, who knows? You can, awesome. you we'll can, see. but just know that you may. So, pro tip for those who run into strip club shuttle buses very right. often: yes. get yourself. A bunch of two forty five because they're cheap. Yeah, yeah, you know, and you niche market, them. but hey, <laughs> get everything get everything cleaned up. Um, but yeah, anyways, so that yeah that happened, and then he had a huge truck, and I was like, hey, I'm not gonna be able to tackle this whole thing. This is gonna be like a weekend in itself. So yeah, uh, or, you know, we're gonna have to re you know meet back up again and you know, knock this out here in the future. Uh, but it, it's always nice. He was he was just ecstatic, and it the funniest part was is I had this pile of toys right. You know, because when you're when I'm like detailing, kids toys, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm just grabbing stuff and I kind of just throw it out of the car as I'm yeah. as I'm cleaning and I pick it up after I'm done. So this pile of kids toys, her do- his daughter walks through the door and she looks at this pile and she's like, "Oh my god!" And she walks over and there's like this piece of pla- I, I was about to throw this thing away. It's just a piece of plastic. She's like, "The lid, the lid to my Barbie house thing that I've been <laughs> looking for for like five months." I'm like, "Wow, I almost threw that away. I'm glad yeah. I set that aside and." She was she was just pumped, but yeah. So I finished that up, um, and that was I mean really that was my whole weekend. I think on Saturday night um, I I left a little early, came home. My buddy Jason is doing a whole turbo swap on his Evo. It's crazy. And, I'm seeing his pictures um, on his Instagram. He, and it's one of those things where this has been like a build building up for like six months. Yeah, he's and been he's, buying all the parts. Like yeah. so, it's six months worth of parts. I mean, thousands and thousands of dollars what? that he's built. Let's up. tell people where they can see it if they want to check it out. Yeah, it's just under his Instagram, uh, low underscore psi underscore evo, mm-hmm. and. Um, I went over there. I'm just like looking, and he's just got this table full of, I mean, lines, fittings. Uh, he's got his new catch can set up. He's got all these titanium. Yeah, there's so bits. much stuff. And I'm like looking. I'm like, oh my god, dude. And he's just like, yeah. And it's all going down like right now. And yeah. I'm like, <laughs> so it was oh funny because we, uh, we, I, I was just there, kind of helping, uh, basically just yeah. drinking a beer and saying yes, that looks right, you know. And <laughs> sure, that, just, perfect. Just Good that, job. just that guy when working on a car that has just a little bit more confidence than you have to right. keep you going, right? Uh, that was that guy. Yeah. And we're going through, but it's funny because he's done all this research, he's collected all these parts. But I tell everybody with anything when it comes to working on a car, nothing will ever truly go as planned. Right. It, whether big or little, something will happen. And so after starting to put these pieces on, he realized, oh, his dump tube won't fit with this manifold. Oh, his extended titanium studs for his manifold won't work because he can't get the screws on because blah, 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 blah. So it was just all this bundle of stuff. And we're sitting there. He's got his car up on jack stands in the middle of the garage. You know, it's that point where he's like, my fiance comes home tomorrow. She's going to want to be back in the garage. This car is not done. It didn't get done. I have to wait on five different companies to ship something out this week so I can finish the thing. That's yeah. what and happens, it's, man. And it's that feeling where I'm like, I'm like, dude, we've all been there, and yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about, and it sucks, but it's just great that you have a daily driver, an extra car. Right, yeah. Because if you're it's in that situation- a beautiful situation, pickup truck. You can just hop in and go. If you're in that situation and you don't have that, it's an, it really is a nightmare, yeah. and you don't know what to do. And so 
Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna I'm gonna help him button it up here probably. Um, maybe once we get back or you know this week. And probably hopefully have it done before. I was gonna say you have like a day and a half before we go to Atlanta. I know, so. I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, but yeah, that was my weekend. Uh, Super Bowl didn't do anything. Just went to my parents' house, hung yeah. out, uh, talked with them. Uh, came home last night, and that was it. So nice. I worked. I worked the weekend. So this timer keeps resetting. Uh, so we've been t- talking for 13 minutes for the last half hour. It's uh, actually a clock. It's not a timer. Oh. It's technically 13 o'clock. It is 13 o'clock. You're right. 58. So yeah, really, that is just it's right. almost 14 o'clock. I was wondering that's why, why I kept there. doing that. Perfect. He told us we had until 15 after, so yeah. 14, 15. That's when we got to Perfect. Thank on. you, Tim. Rock yeah. and roll. Right. Look so at that. there you go. But no, uh, yeah, so like Dane said and Anthony said, we're going to be leaving for Atlanta yeah. on Wednesday morning. So this <laughs> is our last trip before summer. Yeah, yeah. before a little break because, you we know. We get a good break. So we we're going to have, to do around here. we got people coming. We've got just tons of I'm stuff excited. that we're going to be doing. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this break. This Me has too. been one of those <laughs> things where I've kind of told people, I feel unsettled knowing that we we've had so many trips so close together. Yeah, you can't that plan I, that anything. I, that I haven't really committed to anything or planned anything. It's hard to. Or even tried to do anything around the house. Like I have yeah. I still my, my suitcase isn't unpacked from the car. Oh, I bought trip. a new suitcase this weekend. Oh. Really? The, uh, I'm retiring I'm retiring the English gentleman to road trip duty. Okay. All right. And mm-hmm. uh I've I've uh, got a new uh a new case. Nice. I bought a hard case. I'm excited for you. In uh, Rag Company Blue. Oh, nice. very nice. Okay. It's very nice. Um, I need to come up with a name. Right. Um, so we'll see. You guys will yeah. see it on Wednesday, and we'll uh, figure out a name then. Submit but... your names in the comments. What do you want to see? So my last suitcase was tweed and leather. Yeah. And uh, it was very nice. So we called it, Anthony dubbed it the English Gentleman. Um, mm. And uh, so this one is a hard case, all bright Rag Company Blue. I mean, it's it's bright. Um, pretty so blue. It's pretty cool. And uh, so, yeah, so I bought myself that. And then uh, we'll see how long this lasts. Yeah. I mean, literally, um, as much as we've been traveling, like, the, that last suitcase lasted a year. Yeah. 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 I think a lot of it had to do with being fabric with seams and stuff like that. Like, Not, in a hard case. It didn't case, split. It was just the, the uh, everyday tumble and bumble yeah. of travel and putting 30,000 miles on it. Um, is what stressed the hard case will last longer. Yeah, so that's what I'm hoping is that the hard case will hopefully take the abuse a little more. It'll get Uh, scuffed up, but it'll last longer. Yeah, Jeremy Harding of Rupes has an actual like full size Pelican case. See, I love our. That's what he did as a suitcase is a full size Pelican case. Hmm. I would like that when Pelican cases can get their handles right. Yeah, and that's what he said. His handles kept breaking, and so he had to put that, that slide out roller handle. It's like. It's a great idea for in terms of functionality, like you just got to get it places. But in terms of ergonomics and everything, it's not great. It's no. literally like a, just a flat piece of plastic that slides up and down based on this little just you, you pull a fl- tab effectively. Yeah. Right. You pull it back and then it's either locked in or out. It's not I like a it. nice actuator or mm-hmm. anything like that. Yeah. I mean, Pelican cases are high quality, and it is. It's really yeah. high quality, all, all of our Pelican cases, but that that – puller for the travel you know the roller handle is just it has screws on the back like on a plate that holds it on and then you have the tab in there those screws come loose after a while and you got to have like a little you know tiny phillips or something to keep them in place it's not all the time it happens but with enough you know angling it 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 eventually works itself loose so it's kind of a pain the other handles on them are great though i mean like the suitcase briefcase style handle Yeah. yeah fine that one's good but the roller not a fan yeah, no, uh, mm. it's funny. I never thought we'd need to talk, have hot suitcase talk. You know what, though? You know? I think this is what the audience wants. Well, they you know, like they don't think, it, well, like I most think people don't think. I highly think, doubt that. that most people don't want. think about that, though. Like it, when you really do travel a lot, like how much, how much abuse the suitcase gets. Yeah. And like, I think the most damage was done when I was in the UK because mm-hmm. your dad and I had to cart our suitcases with us. To places and getting in and off trains and like the plane and all it was just there was a lot of use yeah. um, for that suitcase. But uh, so I'm excited about this new blue one. But we're gonna leave Wednesday morning. Yep. We fly out of here at 8 a.m. Thankfully, not crazy 4 a.m. stuff anymore. I'm good with not doing that again. For so this will be good. Uh, we are gonna be flying straight to Seattle. <laughs> That's so we're gonna go further away sucks. before and we then go all the way across the country. nonstop to yeah. Atlanta from mm-hmm. Seattle. Woo! 
ooh, this is going to be a fun flight. Uh, Good Good and time. Good time. your dad said he put us in uh, the exit rows, so we don't yeah. get to recline, but we get nice. extra seat room, so that's not yeah, room. Yeah, I'm pretty much... I'm honest, I don't think I've reclined well, Anthony and I. And... So Anthony and I flew on our first leg to Denver. Uh, we flew on a uh, on not business class like we usually do, and it was freakish to realize again like how much leg room is yeah. non-existent yeah. in coach. Mm. Yeah, no, my, like my knees are just on the plastic, and I'm just sitting there like, oh crap, this is yeah. Because so tight. a hot tip: we usually either fly business class or uh, we try to get exit rows because yeah. then yeah. we got the extra room. Um, but Jeff booked us just that first leg from Boise to Salt Lake, and we literally, it was crazy. Like, Anthony was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, like, I feel weird because we haven't flown like this in a really long time. I know, you're just so coddled. We're, <laughs> yeah, we're spoiled, so, spoiled. and we're not even flying first class, we're flying business. So, like, all we're getting is four we're inches. We're kind of company. <laughs> all we're getting is an extra four inches of leg no. room. Like, Man, first class we're, we're just We're just trying to someday. get some basic level comfort going yeah. on here, so. Well, and the, you guys gotta remember, like, when you're flying the entire length of the country, four inches, Makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. yeah, I mean, a long road trip, a little bit of distance for your legs from the back of the seat in front of you if you have to sit in the back of a car, that makes a huge difference. But, yeah. so. You know what's sad, though, is like, you know, I think it's great, but the only thing I'm thinking of is we're, they're going to have the same movies on the entertainment thing <laughs> that we just already have seen. Yeah. And that's the only thing I'm looking for, I look forward to is I'm like, we've seen what movies new before movies they, are on there. It's yeah. why out. I want you but guys we've flown so many times to that download we Polar onto your iPad or, you know, whatever you got and watch it and tell me if I'm crazy for thinking the things well, I that's, think about and it. That's, you should make a judgment In our meeting today, own. that's what I kind of brought up. That's mm-hmm. why I said like, because- uh, the flight when we flew back from uh, Orlando, right. the TVs didn't work and the Wi Fi was out. What's funny is they looked like they worked, but every time you touched them, nothing happened. Yeah, and the Wi Fi was broken. These are real first world problems. I get no, it. No, but I when you but... when you fly as much as us, it starts to become a first world problem pretty quick. Sure. Because yeah. it's just like, oh, this sucks. Mm-hmm. Like, you um, know. If, and if anybody's wondering, my review on those noise canceling headphones, oh, yeah. Those are amazing. Um, they, they are absolutely amazing. Unless they, you listen in on someone else's conversation. Unless you listen on somebody else's conversation <laughs> with a really loud voice that's talking well, about religion for two Explain again hours. how they work. At what model are they? Because they were... Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Sony something. You'll just, have to make a post. Well, his fiance yeah. got them for him, and they are awesome. Yeah, they're nice. Yeah. Like, I tried like, them on. I was like, woo. Like, I like it, it makes a huge... I mean, you don't even realize until... I think it, and it's, it's really mainly just being in a plane is where I noticed the biggest difference, but... Um, because you know, I'm really uh, what's that? You know, because I'm really when I'm hyper vigilant when I fly, mm-hmm. right? I am in a state of anxiety. Nobody yeah. knows that, but I uh, am your head is on a swivel, freaking out. You your head is on a swivel, and you are hyper vigilant at everything. So yeah, we are much so, more chill. So yeah. like my ears, I'm weird about hearing. I'm weird about seeing. I'm weird about smelling. Yeah. And then I'm then he's then, really stressed. Dane is just kind of like we got to follow the rules, or we're gonna get kicked off this plane. <laughs> and I go, I don't care. Yeah, like I, like, I already know what's gonna happen Levi, if we crash. Put away your screen. The attendant's coming. So, <laughs> so that's where don't like, need to do if that. I can no. take one of those senses yeah. away, yeah. right? I find that I calm myself down. Because, like, dude, I'm serious. I'm the type of guy that I see somebody stands up in the uh, during the plane, fl- during the flight, to grab something above above their seat, and I'm sitting there like, "What the hell are they grabbing? That's so important what do they need? right now. What's up there? What do what you did, need? What's going on? A like, laptop? Why what did is check that there? out first? Oh, you need your bottle for your baby. I'm like, is that even a bottle? Is it's, there a baby? Why is that bottle black? Is that baby gonna cry? <laughs> why does it look? Why does it look like a weapon? Oh my god, no! <laughs> I literally think like that, yeah. and nobody understands that. Just that's because this exit flying is a huge anxiety thing for me. So. The noise canceling headphones they help a lot. Yeah, I enjoy wearing them, so I will be using those the entire yeah. time. I use my uh, these uh, earbuds, and yeah. then I put a set of cans over so, yeah. mine, and that's usually how I listen to most stuff. Because then I just mm-hmm. at least blocks out the sound. I did that on budget. That was my uh, budget poor man uh, noise it canceling works. headphones. People are like, "What model is that?" And you take out. And they're like, "Why is there? Why do you have so many wires?" I do. I like, pull it out and then I like pull my <laughs> head, like, my earbud out. Cost Would you less say than that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, it works because there are sometimes like uh, usually I can plug them in and I can just put the thing on that. And yeah, it works. If too. everybody's screaming and running around, I won't know. Yeah, but <laughs> but I am. I'm in the market for those, and that's yep. one I have been looking. I I added them to my Amazon list. 
Yeah. So they're, keep they're, an eye on those. I, what I like is that, remember, because I basically, if you guys go to talk to me, I just put my hand over my ear. And, and it, it like, like, deactivates the... <clears throat> well, it deactivates the noise canceling. And amplifies ampl- our voices. Amplifies, uh, like, the radiant sound. So basically... Yeah. It, it goes for a certain frequency, and it picks up on, like, vocal frequencies. And it yeah, amplifies pretty... those while minimizing everything else. It's yeah, that's... active noise cancellation it's pretty awesome yeah like i was impressed with it too so i I, like i said i added them to my list i'm keeping an eye on them so price gets down enough that i can buy them i will like or factory refurbished like the hiss that the the hvac on planes makes it disappears when you're worried well and that was one of the things like i didn't notice like i just had these guys and i was like on like our first few well no on our first few flights that your dad and i was doing we're doing like i just wore these the problem was they don't fully earbuds don't fully get rid of ambient sound yeah and yeah, just plug it it just right. plugs it yeah. for a little bit but you still have pressure you still yeah. have mm-hmm. uh vibration you still have rattles like this there's still an ambient and so that's why i got the other ones i just put them over and that kind of helped deaden that mm-hmm. yeah uh, but i didn't know that until i started flying a lot and then it was like man my head like hurts just because i'm like you like i have a bit of that hyper vigilance where i I hear other things and I may focus on those and I can't focus on what's going on. Like one flight your dad and I had like the the back panel that I was resting against was vibrating so loud that I couldn't, I couldn't hear what Mm. I was watching Mm. because it was so just so loud. That's where those would be. That's where those would come in. Well, his, that's where they come in handy or just having cans. over. How does this relate to detailing? Well, the entire time I was polishing this weekend, I was sitting there thinking, holy crap, I wish I had those noise-canceling headphones. Yeah, cause because I wear my earbuds all the time because yeah. that's just helps save my eardrums. Well, Even if there's no music in them, yeah. it's just, it helps mm-hmm. lower the decibels. Well, and it's just one of those things, to, I don't know how to describe it. It's like very calming. And then you're like, kind of, you feel like you're in your own little world because you have these. So the only time that would be kind of a bad situation is if you were like detailing at your house or in a shop or something like that, and you didn't know somebody was approaching you, and then you know it scares the crap yeah, out of you yeah. because you really can't hear anything. No, I get that all the time. Like yeah. my wife loves to come in and surprise me when yeah. I'm detailing. My headphones are in. Yeah, I'm you're like, you're oh like, god, you're like, you're like I hate it. It <laughs> makes me upset yeah. that she does that. No, so it's fun. Just, oh god, there's so much blood. It's always our trick to do that is to try yeah. and scare. Yeah. To the point, her sister walked in the other night. And she was reading to Hadley, and I heard, the, and we knew they were coming over, but we heard her walk in, and her sister like hid. And Carly's like, okay, good night, Hadley. Like, talk to you later. Like, sweet dreams. And then, like, closes the door and then turns around, and her sister's like, bah! And Carly's like, bah! bah said about 10 swear words. Yeah, it's no, great. people should not do that it's to awesome. me because I punch at things that surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> Liz, the dog, the, <laughs> the Christmas tree. Punch oh. Liz a couple times. Oh. The Christmas trees are munched plenty of times. <laughs> It's walking through the house and yeah. the thing just startled New me. New dishwasher. I just decked that thing. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that drawing, yeah, though. We need a... Oh, so good. So special. anybody else wants to send in some drawings to us uh, we had on the Q&A. That was amazing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, please. If Hey, maybe there's some uh, great artists that maybe you guys post you know, your artwork, please send it. Carolyn actually printed that picture out and is going to be hanging it in the halls I'm so of TRC. Yes. It's going to be amazing. I'm so uh, happy. Yeah. I know. But no, we're leaving Wednesday. We're going to Atlanta. We're going to hit the G-Technic Serum Summit. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So all of you guys that are going to be down there, you will see us there. We're really excited. We yeah. found out, you know, we knew that Lars or that uh, Ram from Color Lock was going to be there. So we're super awesome. excited to hang out with Ram. And then Lars this weekend from Germany color lock said he was going to be there as well mm-hmm. so super fun added bonus yeah. we're going to have you know the boys from lake country uh i think kxk uh kevin, is, davis, is kevin davis will be there from detailers helper Wa- obviously the whole juan's technique. Gonna be there juan's going to be there yeah homie juan uh all in all just awesome stuff to have everybody there we're excited to be there excited to be a part of it this year yeah um and uh so those of you that are going to be attending please Stop by, say hello. Well, and we're doing some presentations. We may too, be doing a couple we? presentations. Maybe? As far as I know, uh, they've okay. asked us. So yeah. we'll be prepared. If it doesn't happen, oh well. well but otherwise, we'll have our table. And I am really excited we're for We're working Thursday. on a Wash Wednesday. We've got a Wash Wednesday in the works that's like nothing we've ever done before. It so it'll be, be fun. Really fun. I know Anthony's. We're gonna tease that. Half stoked. He doesn't know what he's in for yet, but it'll be good. <laughs> I'm pretty. I'm pretty stoked. <laughs> I think it's gonna be <laughs> fun. So, yeah, but uh, yeah, you can look forward to that. Yeah, but other than that, we'll fly Wednesday, and then we will be back Monday night. So no podcast 
next Monday. Right. So. We'll do a podcast on Tuesday. So apologies <clears throat> in advance, guys. It'll be a little late. You know, we've been and traveling again, so much. And again, no Q and A Thursday. I know people but, love that. I appreciate uh, that you guys thing, love that so much. Yeah. One thing that we are going to try to do that I think we really need to do is if we go to dinner with anybody or something, maybe we try and because we are going to be at like a cabin area, like yeah. a like a resort with everybody, mm-hmm. is maybe we try and line up a couple podcasts we in should. our hotel room yeah. with some of the folks. Like, it'd be fun to get Kevin on again. It'd be fun to get Ram on. It'd be fun to get, uh, you know, maybe David Patterson from Lake Country and yeah. Andrew if they're there. Um, Andy again from KXK, uh, you know, and maybe some of the other folks, maybe some of the G-Technic guys, mm-hmm. um, you know, maybe get Eric and Andrew and stuff like that. Maybe get them, you know, just have them come hang out in our room and we do some super podcasts yeah. again. Um, those always are a lot of fun. And I think, uh, I know you guys like to listen to that as well. So maybe that yeah. would give us something to have so we could, uh, you know, make up, throw the them out yeah. for you guys for the uh, loss of us traveling. But after that, gentlemen, we are home yes. for a while and we'll have lots of guests coming in. Um, and yeah, so we're excited about it. So that's gonna be our week. That will be it. All right, fellas, anything left to add before I close this out? No, just thanks for hanging out, gang. Appreciate it. Kind of a weird podcast compared to normal. Sorry, (laughs) a little detailing, a lot of suitcase talk, a lot of talking about sports. You know what I appreciate, though? A lot of body grooming. There there are a lot of detailing podcasts out there, and there's lots of good ones. There's lots of different info out there. But what I appreciate about ours, not to toot our own horn, is (laughs) we don't just stick to that we kind of jump around well that's What's the, the fun life part of, about like, the people main show detail stuff yeah. that goes beyond just detail well, and i think i think a lot of people like that part about yeah. us is that so, it, it's it's ours it's us and our weekends it's, it's not 100 percent detailing all the way through if you have to assign it a name it's our shtick but yeah yeah that's kind of our thing so well, and we're kind of like the top gear of or the uh <laughs> the grand tour of uh podcasts well I for think, detailing podcasts. Let's, let's think. Who are we? In ter- I feel like I'm James May. I'm you Clarkson. Are abs- you are absolutely James <clears throat> May. I'm always Clarkson. Yeah, yeah. I'm not probably. Yeah, you're Hammond. Hammond. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that was easy. All right. Easy. Well, and on that there bombshell. We go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening and or watching if you're on the Rag Company podcast YouTube channel. That's right. We have two YouTube channels. So make sure you subscribe to both of them because that's awesome. And leave a comment too, by the way. Name uh, name his bag. He needs to know yeah, what guys, to call Yeah, guys, let's that send, thing. send some uh, requests over. I'll, I'll add a picture tomorrow on my uh, Rag Company Levi Perfect. Post. Very nice. So, all right. Pod, or and Instagram. as of right now, my Christmas tree is still up for those of you keeping track. So we can all just oh, accept that heavens. for now. I was worried. <laughs> Don't get worried about that. And by the way, please leave a review, leave a rating on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast. Very helpful. It gets us out in front of more people. So if you haven't done that already, please do so. And if you have, thank you. And uh, on that note, Did you want we will catch analysis? you later. See you guys. Adios. See ya. See ya.